In the year 1910, the American dream was evident all over Indianapolis. In that very year, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway created an annual race that would become known as the greatest spectacle in racing, the Indianapolis 500. Also in the year 1910, another Indiana visionary, Guy Justice, started a home building company based on his principles of quality, integrity, and value. He named it the Justice Contracting Company. The Justices had always built fine homes, back dating to to Guy Justice. He used to dig with a, a, a horse and uh, a trench uh, machine that dug basements. I remember seeing uh, with him teams of horses pulling slip scoops to dig basements and there was no such thing then as cranes and shovels and so forth. He was a, he's a great guy, a really, really hard worker. There's a level of integrity um, associated with the name Justice, especially as it relates to um, you know the business side of things, just being honest, trustworthy, you know, and being a person of your word. Operations quickly expanded, and Guy Justice purchased a small warehouse, barn, and other buildings to house his growing business. The Justice Contracting Company developed the ground, built, and laid every brick on virtually every house from 10th Street to 13th Street and from Emerson to Ritter Avenues and sold them for about $6,000. The Justice Companies made the East Side. Most senior Mr. Justice came in and saw an opportunity here to create the kinds of homes that people would want to live in. He created also the infrastructure for these neighborhoods, laying the sidewalks, paving streets. The Justice Contracting Company was growing fast, but little did Guy Justice know, soon the company and the entire nation would suffer a horrific setback, the stock market crash of 1929. America would be crippled by the Great Depression. Like many American businessmen, Guy Justice fought to keep his company afloat during this catastrophic depression, but he would be tested more than most as he faced yet another tragedy before my time were a series of barns and buildings. And he had horses in those, in those barns and blew of caterpillars and so forth. He owned one dump truck, which is a big thing during that era. Well, he lost pretty much everything during the depression. And then came this humongous fire. And there's pictures of uh, horses running through, through the fields that got out of these buildings. He lost most everything he had again for the second time. Through force of will and sheer determination, Guy Justice kept the company alive. But another more tragic event would end the life of the first president of the Justice Contracting Company. I was, uh, I believe, five or maybe six years old when he was killed in an auto accident. Guy Justice died, but his dreams and his company were placed in the hands of his son, Walter E. Justice. The new president would take his father's dreams to new heights. A mason and a builder like his father, Walter E. built all the homes from 13th Street to 16th Street and from Emerson Avenue to Ritter. These homes sold for an average of about $12,500. The United States and its greatest generation fought to protect the American dream and our democratic way of life in World War II. I remember the day the war was over, VE Day. I remember going downtown to the uh, circle. There were literally thousands and thousands of people there throwing things out of the office windows. Uh, they filled up the pond around the Monument Circle. And it was just a very, very uh, celebratory day. The end of the war to end all wars ushered in a booming economy and some tremendous opportunities for business. The family came from just basically understanding during World War II that servicemen coming out needed a house. And so they started building homes on the east side of Indianapolis. After the war, my father built everything from 10th to 13th and from Emerson to Arlington. And between them, they built several thousand homes just in that one area. 
and uh, every home was a brick home. Everything in the family they ever did was brick. They concentrated on a certain part of the, the city. They're on the east side. They ended up owning tremendous amounts of land, some of which later became commercial. My father he was the man on the east side of Indianapolis. If there, another realtor's for sale sign in the yard, it really upset him a lot. The justice companies had found its stride and secured a reputation on a national level. They were selected to construct homes for better homes and gardens for many years. They were really rolling and uh, he had a zillion trucks. He had his own electrical shops, plumbing shops. There was no subcontracting in those days. <clears throat> his company did it all. Walter E.'s only son, Wally, followed in his father's footsteps as a brick mason. For a time, Wally and his cousins, Tommy and Dale Davison, did the masonry on virtually every home on the east side of Indianapolis. I was a damn good bricklayer. And uh, my father, being the same of the same trade, he would come around many evenings after work and count how many brick I laid in a given day. And he'd give me hell if I didn't lay what he thought I should have. Unlike his father, Wally had a chance to go on to college. But as school started, Wally made a decision that would change his life and the justice companies forever. I attended Butler University one year, and I remember <clears throat> going out to see my father. And I got in his car, he said, what do you want? Why aren't you in school? I said, Dad, I don't like school. I want to be a bricklayer like everybody else in our family. He said, well, show up tomorrow with your, with your tool bag and go to work. So that's the way it started out. It's the 1960s and America is changing once again. During these times, Walter E. Justice develops the company's most innovative and profitable product, the Crestwood Village concept. In about 1960, at the time, there was no place to go for the elderly person to live in I noticed that mostly in our church, the elderly people in our church uh, that had large homes had homes that lived in for years, and they wanted to, uh, <clears throat> they, they would talk to me, being a builder, why don't you build something for us? I remember the morning his father came in with, it was on Monday morning, then the weekend, he said, look here what I did over the weekend, I'm gonna build these. He thought it would be the greatest thing for older people, and it was, it was. We leased those first few buildings just as fast as we could build them. First they built the homes for all these people, then when these people were selling their homes, they moved them into Crestwoods. And uh, I think that uh, uh, those people trusted them with their homes, so they trusted them with entrusting their lives to them. With the Crestwood projects generating profitable revenue, the justice companies enter another era of tremendous growth and prosperity. By the late 1960s, Wally Justice had become the president of the company. Wally was well prepared as he spent his entire life in the business with his father. I used to sit outside his office as a child, <clears throat> weekends when he was in his office making deals with people to buy houses or whatever that may have been and listen to every word he said and I think I hopefully picked up a lot from him. He came out of the trenches, took over and uh, surrounded himself with some competent people and uh, just took the business to another level. My uh, attitude in, in business has always been to hire people that I thought were smarter than myself, which isn't too difficult to do. Wally's contribution to the company included adding commercial and retail development to the portfolio, as well as expanding all levels of operation. Wally even brought the first Marriott Hotel in Indiana. In fact, it was only the third ever franchise of the Marriott ever built in this country. Wally also initiated the multi-housing division of the company, which resulted in the development of over 10,000 apartment homes throughout the Midwest. During that period of time, we did all kinds of things. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Uh, we developed and did most of the automobile agencies on Shadeland Avenue. We bought and sold a lot of real estate. We traded a lot of real estate. We learned a lot of things together. And they developed Wellington, which was 100 acres on the east side. 
He pioneered uh, the condominium concept there at Wellington and also at Wellington uh, Apartments, building larger apartments for families. I've supplied brick to houses they built, which some of the people were third generation that had a justice home. They would want the customer to be happy, and they would make them happy. If things didn't go right, they'd come back and fix it. And I think that's one of the reasons they, they are successful and have lasted 100 years, is because they, uh, they honor their word. The 1980s witnessed the birth of cable television, personal computers, and video games. Later in this decade, Wally Sun Walt Justice soon became the fourth generation president of the company. The formula of success had been set by the previous Justice generations. Outwork the competition. I have memories of um, the time I was living on 10th Street, for example, no matter what he did or I did the night before, come 6.30 or 7, you know, it was always like this, you know, you know get your ass up the next morning and, you know, and get going. And so um, I, I just, I never woke up of a morning where he already wasn't out the door. Walt Justice now personally supervises the direction of each of the company's departments, including property and asset management, development and construction. Justice homes now range from 160 to $600,000. He's very confident about, he, about what he does. He's very thoughtful in everything that he does and he always just seems to, to uh, illustrate the concern about the people that, that he and his company are serving. Through strong leadership, strategic planning, and another generation learning the trade, the justice companies are poised to thrive for another 100 years. The opportunity to continue to promote the company and the, the mission, the principles, everything that the company was founded on, quality, value, integrity, and having that is, is really the pinnacle of my career. What we want to become is the leaders in all aspects of housing. And if we attribute our past success and hone it in towards this younger baby boomer, then we'll have just that much more of the population that we can serve. Through all the challenges, the Justice Company stand is strong by relying upon the founding principles of Walter Guy Justice. The lasting legacy of these remarkably strong and visionary men is nothing short of extraordinary. In all the years I worked here, I never had a day when I hated to go to work. Now what does that speak about the company and the people? Not many people can say that. Today we're dealing with a company that started in 1910. How many do you know that are still around and still have it private, still have it as a family owned and operated business? The community, and even extending beyond the community, they view the company and the Justice family as being synonymous with integrity and quality. Money can't buy reputation. Reputation is earned. And reputation can be destroyed in five minutes. And they never, ever did anything to destroy their reputation. As far as what the vision of our company is or where we're heading right now is to do what we do best. We have the team to, 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 to grow with that right now from every aspect, accounting, marketing, management, you name it. So. We were looking already at projects in 2011, 2012. 100 years seems like a long time. And from generation to generation, the justice companies have been a part of the fabric of America, providing housing for young and growing families all the way through their golden years. They have touched the lives of tens of thousands of trusting homeowners. The justice company is proud to be a part of the great American dream the city of Indianapolis, and all the lives they have touched. The Justice Companies, standing the test of time.